but you can't hear me. You can hear me now. <laughs> Y'all know how it is. It's crazy. It's crazy. How are you? How is everyone doing this evening? I am Eve with the baby's booty. And we are coming to you live and in color, full of jive tonight. So I hope you all are doing very well. I wanted to welcome you here where we discuss embroidery, we discuss sublimation, we discuss rhinestones, we discuss sublimation. Did I say sublimation already? Probably. And a little bit of vinyl. All right. So there's a lot that we discuss here on this channel. You're welcome to chime in and chat. Keep it respectful, please. And if you have any questions, you can drop them in the chat. All right. And we'll try and get to your question as soon as possible. If you are in uh, wish to be a part of the group, y'all have to forgive me. I'm exhausted tonight. <laughs> I am tired. Let me start out with that. Hold on. Let's rewind. I'm tired. I want to let y'all know I am worn out. So if I say something crazy or mess up something, it's because I am exhausted. Very, very, very. So now that I've explained any craziness that may take place on this channel this evening, now I can say welcome to each and every last one of you. If you have any questions, drop them in the chat below. <laughs> if you um, would like to join our group, we have a couple of group options for you. We have our YouTube Hoop group, which is here on YouTube. It allows us, you can be a member here and it allows us to have some financial support of our channel. We definitely appreciate those who choose to be a part of the Hoop group. Also, we have our Facebook group, which is available as well. You can join that. Just go on Facebook and look up Hoop group and you should find us there. You're welcome to post pictures and um, pictures of your projects as long as they're not offensive um, or encroach on any of the rules of the group um, you're welcome to do that and let us know what you've been working on also we have our forums our who group forums which is listed right here below my face where it says thebabiesbooty.com you can go to our website and you can join our forums there as well uh, where you can also post questions and suggestions and a lot of times I'll put a lot of uh, hints, some freebies, uh, latest offers that I found to be helpful, we put in either or place. All right. So one of the reasons for this channel is you. Okay. So I want to take a few moments here at the beginning to say welcome to each and every one of you individually. Because without you, I wouldn't have a channel. All right. So let's log in and say hello to Miss So Crafty. Thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member. And I enjoyed our captain's meeting tonight with you. Thank you. Thank you so very much for joining with me this evening. It was a pleasure. And I look forward to the next time. Hey, Miss Scooby Doo, how are you? Welcome. And thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member as well. Cheryl Melton, hello, how are you? Lori Campbell, hello to you as well. Antonio, hey Antonio, how are you? And thank you for your email. And thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member. The Baby Shower Place, hey love, how are you? Welcome, thank you for joining us. Pat Ash, good evening to you as well. And thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member. Miss Bickham, hey, how are you doing this evening? Thank you for joining us. Let me know if there's any grandbabies in the house that I need to say hey to. And thank you for joining us this evening. And give my brother a hug for me. I hadn't talked to him in a while. You gotta be kidding. Hello, how are you? Welcome. Tanyu, hey Tanyu, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Latasha, hey Latasha, enjoyed the captain's meeting with you as well. Thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Captain at that. Thank you. I enjoyed our time this evening. Miss Leela Nelson, hey love, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us and for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Um, Patricia Avila Garza, hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Inspiration Creations is Miss Lori from Canada. Hey dear, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Norma Lazaro, hello, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Miss Social Dev. Hey, Miss Social Dev, how are you today? Welcome, and thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member. I appreciate that. 
Sharice Mims. Hello, hello. Ready, set, learn. What well, we going to learn tonight, girl? We're going to be embroidering towels. I am looking forward to it. Miss Dexter Wilson, large and in charge with towels. She said, I need help with towels. Miss Dextra, we got you. We got you. Look, I, I got a little towel, a little hand towel, and I got a big towel. And we're going to do both of these, both of them, on. Get this, y'all. Miss Dextra, we're going to do this on a fold by fold embroidery machine. I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you was talking about 5 by 7 we're going to hit up the 4 by 4 So I just want you to know that this can be done. You got to have the right tools, but we're going to do it, and we're going to have us a good time tonight. So we're going to be doing towels, y'all. We're going to be doing towels. Miss uh, Stampin' Sue Creates, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Dorothy Gaston from the STL, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. PG says, hello, Eve, and Baby's Booty Farm. Fam, sorry. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. It can feel like a farm sometimes, especially over here. Yeah, it's crazy. Susan Green says, hi, Eve. Doing great. Please get your rest. Take care. Love the hoop group. Susan Green, I'm trying, girl. I'm trying. I'm trying so hard. But the problem is, when you move into a new house, there's always something that needs to be done. And yes, I do have the rest of my little life to do all of this stuff. But when you walk and pass it every day and you're like, oh, my God, if that wall is that same color for another 24 hours, I'm just going to scream. And so you take the time and you paint. And then once you start painting, you realize, oh, my God, it's more than one wall that needs to be paint. Paint needs to go all the way around all four walls. And then you just realize you bit off more than you could chew. But you got to keep going because you done already opened the can of paint and started rolling, you know. Mm -mm, not much rest going on around here. So yeah, painted a whole lot another room. My laundry room is now being painted, and as tied, as as real tied. Yeah. So because your your girl can't be just simple and just paint. She got to take the molding off the wall. She got to caulk. She got to yeah. I'm extra. As my grandpa used to say, I'm extra. So yeah, I'm making it worse on myself. <laughs> Look, I need to hire somebody, but that ain't happening no time soon. But at any rate, so yeah, I would like to get some rest, but I'm also, you know, biting off more projects every day. And that don't even include the porch swing I'm trying real hard to build. So yeah, it's a lot going on around here. Just by being yo, hey, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Miss 143, happy Sunday even all. Glad to be here. We always happy to have you here and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Nancy Fowles from Iowa, hello. Deborah Harris Neal, good evening to you as well. Barbara Greenwell, hello to you as well. Miss Andrea Ross, hello dear, how are you? Welcome and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Um, Embroidery Diva, good afternoon, how are you? Welcome, thank you for joining us this evening. Patrina Gosha from Alabama, I am doing decent, just tired, but I'm doing decent. Sandra Miles, Sandora, sorry, Miles. Hello, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Pamela Bradley White is here. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate that. Nick Nick Nurse, hey, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Miss Debbie D, hey, Debbie D. <laughs> Welcome. Always, always a pleasure to have you and enjoy the meeting with you tonight as well. Luana Stark. Uh, thank you, and to Miss Debbie D for being YouTube Hoop Group members, and Miss Heather Butler, thank you as well for being a YouTube Hoop Group member, and hello to you. And Luana, please be careful. Please, please, please be careful, because you guys, that wildfire over there in California, it, it breaks my heart every time I see the images. It just, it does something to me, because it brings life into um, focus somewhat or rather it helps you focus on what's most important in life. And when our dear friend and so art instructor, Miss Stephanie, uh, had to flee her home um, just last week, this past week, and just hearing about having to stop and decide what's most important to take with her in a vehicle, you know, it, it gives you, it makes you take pause and you have to 
really reevaluate the things that you have in your life because I have my embroidery machines that I absolutely love, but I also have my sublimation I absolutely love. Oh my gosh, my rhinestone collection, my computer equipment, my camera equipment. I mean, it's just, it's crazy when you stop and then you're like, okay, but is that all of that really that important? You know, because you can't take all that fabric and you can't take all the equipment and you can't, you know what I'm saying? So y'all, please be careful. Keep, um, you know, our California, Oregon, and Washington folks in your thoughts. And if you pray prayers, because it's bad, y'all. And to see that is really a, a kick in the stomach to know that folks is out there losing everything. I mean, no, nothing, everything burns, slam to the ground. And how do you recover from that? So, I mean, you can recover, you do recover, and they will recover, but it's just, you know, having to even think about potentially going through that. So please keep that in mind whenever you're going through stuff and you seeing folks saying ugly stuff online and folks is wanting to argue and nobody's wanting to get along and all that jazz. I mean, it could be so much worse, y'all. How hard is it just to be nice to each other? We're going to be nice to each other here because I, I appreciate each and every one of you. I really do. But welcome, Luana, and please be careful. Um, let us see Heather Butler. I did say hello, but again, thank you for being a YouTube group member. Bonnie Whitlow, good evening to you as well. E. Glenn, hello, Pearl Lucas. Hey, Pearl Lucas, how are you? Have you been blinging? Did you bling any with your bling? I've been meaning to ask you that. Karen Murray from Canada. Hey, Karen Murray, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for being a YouTube who group member as well. A garden for mom. Hello, Monica Torres. Hello. Uh, Suzanne, go grand go from the Space Coast down there in Florida. Welcome, my dear. Always a pleasure to have you in here with us. So welcome. Let's see. Colette Martin. Martin hello. Isabel Morgan Catlett. Hello to you. Chris DeJean. Hello. Um, Dextra Wilson says she's excited. Okay, cool. We're getting ready to get into it. I think what we're going to do is go ahead and jump into it a little early tonight because I don't want to run out of time. So we're going to get into some towels. Um, Miss Rhodey, hello, how are you? Suzanne R. from College Station, Texas. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Monica Torres, she got the SE 1900, y'all. She got the 1900. So guess what that means? Who knows what that means? <laughs> so for all of you regular hoop group members, you know what we about to do. We celebrate. So around here in the Baby's Booty Studios, if you get a new piece of equipment, you let us know what it is and that you finally have it. Not that you ordered it, but you got it. We celebrate with you. So let's pull out our purple bells. Oh, oh wait a minute. Hold up. Before I get there, one more interruption. Bells went out last week. So, matter of fact, yesterday. So, we sent out bells. So, the first wave of bells have been sent. So, what's that? 12, 12 bells have been sent out. So, be on the lookout. You should have gotten an email stating that your bells are on the way. So, check your email for a message from the USPS. That's how I sent them out. And, unfortunately, we know what's going on with the USPS. But, that was about the only way I could afford to get them bells to you. So, Hopefully, they'll be there soon, but all of them have tracking. So, if you got an email, then it should have your tracking information in there so that you can follow your bail on its way to your place. I'm so excited. But meanwhile, let's get back. So, she got the SE 1900, so we is fence to rain. I will bail. Come on, y'all, and join me in saying congratulations. <laughs> Monica on your new SE1900. That's going to be awesome. So the SE1900, if I'm understanding correctly, SE meaning it can sew and embroider. So if that's the case, you really will be interested in the project that we're going to have coming up here on this channel. So I'm super excited about that. So be on the lookout for a sewing and embroidery project coming out from over here. Deborah Harris, Neil, thank you. I can't wait. So excited. Yas, you're welcome. You're welcome. Eartha Lewis from Port Allen, Louisiana. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Chris DeJean, say Texas hunty. Well, welcome from Tejas. Thank you for joining us. Angelia Baker, welcome. Sun Doris Miles. Wait a minute. I said all of that, I think. Am I, am I repeating myself? Probably. 
but we're going to go on down. Miss Roni says, greetings from Michigan. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Sharice Mim says, my new Janome 500E came today. You so excited. Hi. <laughs> To know me, 500 E, we first to have some fun. See, you get to do towels with us too. Uh, how cool is that? We're gonna do some towels tonight. So, keep in mind tonight, we're doing little itty bitty towels, and I also have a bigger towel. But the little itty bitty towels, anytime someone starts out in embroidery and they're like, Hey, I got my embroidery machine, my first project, what do you think I should do? I'm super excited. I say towels, all right. The reason why I say embroider on towels is because you can go to Dollar Tree, get little ratty towels just like this, or you can go a step higher and go to Walmart, get a little hand towels. I think they're something like 98 cents or something to that effect. Or you can even get the larger bath towel. And the ba la 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 larger bath towel, I think is $1.50 or $1.80. It's no more than two bucks. Well, it used to not be no more than two bucks as of this past summer when I went and bought one. But at any rate, the towels are super cheap. The El Cheapo ones, not the super plush ones. You can embroider on that too. But start out small. Start out with the El Cheapo. And the reason why I say a towel is because even if you mess up, usually folks say towels are the hardest thing to do. And they're not. So even if you mess up on doing your towel, it's still a towel. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to worry about it. You can still wash it. You can still clean with it. You can still take your makeup off with it. You can still dry dishes with it, even if you screw up. And then if you screw up on this end, guess what? You got a whole nother end to turn the towel to and try again. Or you can try in the middle because both the ends is jacked up with a jacked up and murdery design. It don't matter. I love towels. Love, 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 love towels for that reason alone. But I promise you, once you get the hang of doing towels, you'll want to do towels because towels are so thinking simple to do. And keep in mind, if you do a shirt, you start out with a shirt or you start out with pants or a hat, you can't wear it because it's messed up. Who wants to wear a messed up hat or a messed up shirt? So towels are our friends. So we're going to do a little hand towel first, and then we'll work on a design for a big fluffy towel. Okay. And the cool thing is, you can hoop both of these the exact same way. Now, the towel from Dollar Tree or the little thin hand towel, um, you can hoop it. You can hoop it. But with the towel, what we're going to do is float tonight. I'm going to show you how floating works. All right. So let me go in and say, Sundora Smile says, my baby in the hospital, your SE 1900. Oh, no. Uh, hopefully, your baby will be home really soon because that sucks. We don't like for the babies to be sick. Delia Castro Short. Hello from Marysville, Michigan. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'm pretty sure that's Michigan. Uh, hi, Sheila Cushion Mary. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Nora22000. Hey, love that extra girl. <laughs> I know, right? That was my papa. I love to hear him say that. Trini Stitcher, Stitchers, TT, Aisha Graham from Trinidad and Tobago. Welcome, my dear. Thank you for joining us from the tropics. Um, let us see. Let us see. Anita Ware, good evening to you as well. Let's see. Avery Head, hello E. Which group do you have to be in to get a bell? Any any one of the YouTube Hoop Group memberships. So if you join with the Hoop Group membership, shoot me an email and let me know that you joined. And I'll go let me know what your YouTube username is too, by the way, because they don't tell me that. Um, but send me an email to thebabiesbooty at gmail.com. Just like you see it down here, just at, at gmail. And let me know that you have joined memberships. I'll refer and confirm that on YouTube and then send me your address in the same email. Say, hey, this is, this is my username on YouTube. This is my address. I joined. Can I get a bill? And a bill will go out. Um, Nancy Lardy says, hello to everyone. Just got my PR 670. What? Not the five by seven, hunty. Is that the five by seven? No, that's not the five. Is that the five by seven or is that the four by four? Either way, it's still an embroidery baby. So we're going to ring the bell. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up. Not PE, PR 670. That's the six needle. <laughs> Yes! 
Am I wrong? Ain't that the sixth needle? Go you. Uh, that's what's up. Congratulations on your new baby. That is huge. So yes, we're going to have a lot of fun. A lot of fun, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. All right, so let's see. My brother-in-law is trying to get out of there now as we speak. That's good. Shirley Stewart says she has family in Oregon checking in every day. So far, they're safe. So far, that's good to know. Tracy, hey, Tracy, can't, can't, say, can't not say hey to you, my dear. Welcome, Mary Brown. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. The Sewing Brat. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, Nora says we got wildfire here in Northern California. Ashes falling from the sky, lives, homes, hopes, trees all up in smoke. Yeah, it has been really, really, really tough to sit on this side and see that and know that it wouldn't take much for it to happen over here. It really wouldn't. No matter where you are, fire does not discriminate at all. So, uh, Glenn says the bell is too close to the mic causing feedback. Uh oh, I sorry, Glenn. You know we got the um ring like crazy around here. I apologize. I'll try and ring a little bit softer for you, babe. Nancy Lardy says it is the six needle. Holla, y'all! Little bitty ring. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's get into doing a towel. So what I'm going to do on my end. Uh-oh, Baby Shower Place just added a cricket maker, so we need to ring the bell for you. I'm going to bag up and ring the bell. <laughs> cricket maker! <laughs> Hopefully that was a little bit better, Glenn. I'm sorry. Marge Campbell says, don't forget to hit the thumbs up like button. Marge, welcome, and thank you for that. I appreciate it. Kelly Sherrard. Hi, Eve. I just qualified for financing for a 15-needle machine. I'm so excited. One step closer to having my new baby girlfriend. We gonna celebrate when that baby get there. Please be sure to let me know. And congratulations, my dear. 15 needles is a step that you'll just be like, no other needle count will work. So I love my 15 needle, even though I still use my six needle and still use my single needle. But that 15 needle has just that deep down special place in my heart. I love my baby. <laughs> Pamela Bradley White says, you ring it, girl. I know, right? And congratulations to you again, Kelly. That is totally awesome. Um, let us get into towels. I'm going to go into my um, latest designs and see if I can find one that is four by four worthy and see about getting us a simple design to put on this towel and then oh no 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 that's not where we want to go i think i'm gonna go for my other computer and then what we'll do is um put it over on the single needle machine so because this towel is so small what i'm actually going to do you know what let's keep it simple I'll put a design on the big towel. On the little towel, we'll just use a design that's in the machine because not everybody has um, access to designs or have purchased designs, all right? So definitely, uh, hey, John, how are you? My Tazzy is in here. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And Margo, hello from Washington State. You as well. Please be careful up there with the uh, fires. And you're welcome, Miss Kelly. <laughs> I try, girl. I try. We're going to use a design that's in the machine. Not everybody purchases designs right off the bat. So let's see what we can accomplish with just the machine. So I'm going to switch us over to the other camera. And I think it is this one. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Nope, it's this one. Let's see. Boom. There we go. Holler! A heifer done graduated, y'all, and pulled and dusted off an old video camera. And now we got the old video camera. Let me make sure of where my sound is coming from. Let's see. Sound is coming from here, so I'm going to switch it to there. All right. Yep, we're good. Okay, so let me back this up some. Back up my camera. Whoop. 
and let's not focus on the bag of thread down there that's going to be fixed ASAP. Meanwhile, let's look at this puppy right here. So here's our four by four. And while I go grab um, a hoop, this is what we're gonna be working with this evening. And if I had time, we would work with a repositional hoop, but I don't have time for that tonight. So we're gonna work with just this four by four hoop, okay? And what we're going to do is hoop stabilizer. We're not gonna hoop the towel, even though you can hoop the towel, and I could show you that as well, especially this little thin towel. But I would prefer, because everybody for the most part knows how to hoop something, I'll prefer to show you how to hoop just the stabilizer. So meanwhile, just to be sure that you understand how it works, we'll go ahead and hoop um, both because I want to be sure that you know what it is to hoop your, how tight it needs to be hooped. That's what I'm trying to say and having a hard time saying it. Let me check my chat real quick. Sorry about that. Let me blow this up so that I can see. Forgot to mention that I got a new Epson. Uh-oh. All right, Tracy. Let me get the bell over here, Tracy. Congratulations on your new sublimation printer. Woo! <laughs> Congratulations, girl. Holler. <laughs> Hopefully that, that ring came through good. All right, so let's grab us some stabilizer over here, y'all. We need a couple of we need a couple of different types of stabilizer for this project. One of the stabilizers we need is this colossal roll right here. Although you don't have to have a colossal roll. I have a colossal roll because of the large size hoops um, that I use from time to time. But I'm going to open this up here in a moment. But we're going to set that to the side. And then we are going to pull out this stabilizer, which is another big roll. But I'm going to cut it down for the 4x4 four four hoop so that it'll fit. Only because my normal pre-cut sheets, eight by eight sheets um, that I would use for my four by four hoop is way in the other room. And y'all know I am not a fan of leaving the camera to go get stuff unless I absolutely have to. So I'm not gonna do that. But for the time being, I'm gonna set this to the side. We'll talk about that in a minute. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this colossal roll of stabilizer. This stabilizer, is actually wash away and tear away in one, okay? So when we do towels, I generally do tear away stabilizer. Um, if you look at some of the professional recommendations that are out there, they suggest you use cutaway on a towel. Can anybody tell me why they would say use cutaway? Why would they say use cutaway? All right, so I'll cut a couple of pieces of this. And of course, I'm asking you a question and can't see the chat because the chat is way over there. So how smart is that? But it's all right, I'm gonna get my phone so that I can see the chat here in a moment. But the reason why they say to use cutaway why they recommend cutaway on a towel is because towels are washed okay regularly like usually you use a towel you wash it use a towel you wash it use a towel you bleach it use a towel you wash it and with all of that washing what their concern is is that without proper stabilization the stitching will fail um, not that the towel will fall apart, but that the, it'll end up bunched up like this and your, your stitching won't stay nice and flat and beautiful as it should through the years. Well, towels are kind of resilient and they have been. Um, I've embroidered on towels and I've embroidered on towels as gifts and have yet to find someone with a problem with their towel that I've done with tearaway. So I tend to suggest tearaway. And because I'm one of those type folks that I like 
um, the way the uh, I don't like the way the embroidery looks on the back of the towel it annoys me so I like to suggest that we use tear away and not look at cutaway on the back of the design that is entirely up to you okay you can make that choice if you decide you want to use tear away or cutaway it's up to you there is no wrong answer there is no wrong answer the correct answer is one that works for you and your customer okay or if the project is for you it works for you and you only so that's the right answer but there are a couple of options that you can do with that so generally what I would do now this is the option for if you wanted to hoop your towel with your stabilizer okay and you have a little thin towel one of the first things I'll do is lay out the measurements for my design okay so being that I'm using a 4x4 hoop first thing I'll do is find the center of my towel there's a couple of ways you can do that um, you can do the same way I do which is you know old-fashioned way just pull out the ruler or use my mat <clears throat> and this is roughly 11 inches so that would be five and a half which is right here so I'm going to make just a really quick mark right here with my chalk rolling chalk marker but eventually I'm gonna come up here and then the other direction I grab a ruler lay it across sorry not lay it across lay it up this way I already marked that way and I'm gonna go up about five inches from now nah, that's too high let's go up four inches from the edge of the towel because it's a four by four so I shouldn't have to worry about being too high or too low and I'm gonna mark four inches up okay so I have my four inch mark so now that I have that and I'm gonna line this up with the bottom of the towel and line up one of my marks with this center mark down here I got my up and down to show me where my center is and here's my side to side to show me where to line up my embroidery hoop okay it's tragic looking but towels don't make it easy for you I don't know if you can see that or not barely probably but here's my center line and my center line going across that way this is where I want my design to go all right and keep in mind on your hoop you have your center line here your center line there you see the little notch on the inside hoop there's your notch there there's your notch up there okay and then you have your side notches here to show you where the center is so those chalk, chalk lines that I just put on there, I'm just going to line up here and here. So that's even if you lose the little plastic grid that comes with this, you can use these notches. Most hoops come with notches to help you line up your stuff, okay? So now that I have my chalk line, now the, again, this is if you wanted to hoop a thin towel with your stabilizer. I'm going to loosen this up. And put down a stabilizer again this is tear away wash away tear away and then I'm gonna put down a towel now here is where it can get kind of tricky especially if you don't have the uh, little grid thing so again you want to look for your little line markers and line them up as best as you possibly can with your side so that means now I haven't pushed the inside hoop down in just yet. It's still just sitting on top. Okay, and I'm feeling for where the hoop is. So this I know is up against the inside of it, but I haven't pushed it in. I'm just feeling for it. And now that I know where it is, I'm gonna leave that sitting on top just like it is. And then I'm gonna pull the towel ever so slightly, not the stabilizer too, just the towel. I'm going to tug it just a little bit to pull it up to where that line is on the side of the hoop. All right. I haven't pushed my hoop down in yet. I'm just making sure that the surface of the towel is flat. As flat as it possibly can. Not a bunch of wrinkles and stuff. It's flat. It's not tight, but it's flat. 
all right and so now I'm gonna look up here to where my center line is and where my center line is down here because I didn't make a full line up and down it's off just a little bit but for me I'm not super worried about it because there is a way to adjust it once it's on the machine so now that I see my towel is smoothed out it's at least centered this way and I got my stabilizer up under it now I'm going to attempt to merge the top hoop into the bottom all right and you see I'm struggling I'm struggling with that so that means the bottom hoop isn't loose enough so we're just gonna loosen it up and I know some of you probably be like and eh, we all know how to hoop a towel that's true but for the sake of argument and to make sure that we all are on the same page and that we all understand the basics I'm just gonna take a moment and run through this real quick because what I'm finding is people still have trouble hooping properly whether it's a towel whether it's a shirt anything so you just want to make sure that it's flat before you put the two hoops together so I loosened it and now it's going down in there pretty good let me make sure I'm feeling that correct correctly nope I'm not so I'm gonna loosen it some more and we're gonna try again make sure that's getting down in there and there we have a hooped towel okay now this is what people need to look for when they hoop towels shirts onesies anything notice there's it's not drum tight you see how it's able to wrinkle a little bit it's not super tight but that stabilizer has it good and snug so that we don't have to worry about this shifting around a whole bunch while it's in the hoop that's the most important thing you don't want this all wrinkled up though but you do want it laid nice and flat and you want it to be secure that's what you're looking for is a secure project you don't want this popping out you don't want this so make sure that you loosen it good and good enough to where you're not struggling to put this together but it's it's nice and snug okay and your project is hoop so this is how you can hoop with the towel and the stabilizer the towel has to be thin enough now if I had to loosen this all the way up to where the screw came out then your towel is too thick for that hoop don't hoop it don't hoop it this is the option that you want to use here so the one that we're going to use tonight is just hooping the stabilizer since I wrinkled that up I'm going to set it off to the side and use it for a different project and I'm going to tighten my thumb screw back on my hoop and I'm going to go ahead and try that with the hoop in there tighten it down pretty snug so one more turn so you want your hoop to be in together without falling out and we are oh it feel we are going to hoop just the stabilizer so again this is wash away tear away or tear away now if you asked i don't know if anyone asked the wash away tear away roll that i i got as well as that large um water soluble stabilizer that's going to go on top which we'll get to that in a minute um i ordered both of these from <clears throat> tex mac so tex mac direct i think is the website dot com and that's for the happy embroidery machines so all I did was just lay my stabilizer down and then hoop it okay so here's my stabilizer there's that drum that's what you want to hear that's what you want to listen for is your drum and so we have a pretty much perfect stabilizer right so how is this helping with our towel one of two things you can do you can use spray adhesive this is an old can of spray adhesive. God only knows where I got it from. I don't even remember. <clears throat> but this can be used for machine embroidery. So this is needle friendly. I believe the 505 spray that you can get from Walmart. I believe that is needle friendly as well. Make sure that you read the directions and whatnot. And make sure that it can be used with sewing for a sewing needle. Because if you don't, this will gum up your um machines and notice it does have a picture of the machine on there so you know that this should be safe for embroidery. so 
So one thing you can do is spray this light. I mean like a really quick spritz, not a whole bunch of, it doesn't take all of that. Just like, and that's it right here on the center. I don't really like to spray stabilizer while it's in my hoop because it gums up and dirties up my hoops. So I don't particularly care for that. Another option that you can use is, where is it? Um, right here. Another option, a surprising option to some people, is this here. You can use a glue stick. So glue sticks work as well. Um, again, use it lightly. Uh, you don't take a whole bunch. This one is old as dirt, so it probably, it probably won't glue anything. But you can use it and just do, you know, a couple of little lines. I would say around the outer edge more so than in the middle where the embroidery is going to go. But you can use a glue stick as well. <clears throat> and that'll help hold the project down. Another thing that you can use is you can pin your towel down in place. So you can lay the towel on your hoop and line it up again like we did before as best as you can line it up with the edge of the hoop centered and then get you some stick pin, not stick pins but you know quilting pins or ball pins and then pin all the way around the outer edge out far far away from your sewing field i don't like to pin my projects i have in a pinch when i didn't have anything else but I don't like it and I don't usually recommend it. And the reason why is because your pins can hit the needle if they're not pinned out of the way enough or um, it can get caught on this throat plate as your machine is stitching. So it can get caught here and jam up your machine and all that jazz and cause problems. If you absolutely have to, the glue stick doesn't work, spray adhesive doesn't work, you can Pen. I just don't I'm really really paranoid about pen and stuff okay so let's get on with the project so here I just did a little bit of uh, glue stick and as you see it barely holds this towel which is fine because I'm not going to be doing a really big embroidery design on this particular towel but even still there's another option with some machines there's a basting stitch that will go all the way around where your design is going and that will hold your towel in place as well to keep it from shifting. So that's another option. It's called a basting stitch. So some machines have it, some machines don't. I think this machine has it, but I have never used it. All right, so once you, a um, couple of things about towels, actually, before I put that on, a couple of things about towels. The cool thing with towels is you can see the back once it's embroidered, okay? So when you give this as a gift, they're gonna see the front and the back. Some things to help with that is, if you decide to use tearaway, is you can use the same color bobbin thread as your towel. So if your towel is black, I can put black bobbin thread back here and it'll match the back of the towel. Now keep in mind that when your embroidery tension is perfect, you'll still see roughly two thirds no, no, one third, you'll still see roughly a third of your top thread on the back side. So it doesn't matter. You're still going to see, like if I did white up here and black down here, you'll still see some of the white thread on the back because that's appropriate. That's how embroidery is supposed to look on the back of the design. Um, so if you want to, you can use the same color and you'll still see two thirds of the black and that'll minimize uh, the footprint of the embroidery thread on the back side or you can match your top thread with your bobbin thread and you'll just see the reverse of your embroidery design on the back of the towel now that really works handy if you're only using one color like I'm going to do tonight but if you use two and three different colors well in that instance it may be better to match the back of the towel with your bobbin thread versus the same color top and bottom top and bottom because then you'll be changing bobbin colors every time you change the thread color so that can be a pain in the butt just another tip that i wanted to put out there all right so um this got off a little bit so let me move this i didn't see it till just then okay and 
Nope, that ain't right. All right, so now there we have that. Or actually, I could spray the back of the towel instead of spraying my hoop. There we go. Couple of different options. Couple of different options. Either way, that spray adhesive has an odor to it too, and that's another reason why I prefer not to use it. So. On to putting the towel on the machine. So we have our stabilizer, we have our towel, we have it stuck to the stabilizer as best as we possibly can without overdoing it because it doesn't take all of that. We just need it to hold in place until it starts stitching good. All right, I have white bobbin thread and white up here in the top because tonight I'm being lazy and I don't want to match the color of the towel, which I do have pre-wound bobbins, but I'm just, again, being lazy tonight. And I'm going to slide that right up under the foot. And before I attach this, the other thing with towels you have to keep in mind is the towel has a nap on it. Okay. So your towel has this pile fabric. So of course we know normal fabric is nice and smooth. There's no nothing sticking up from it. Nothing fluffy. Whereas towels have this fluffy pile on top. So if you go to embroider on this, it's almost like you're trying to, um, if you were to stick a needle in this fabric, you may not see it as easily as you would if we were to stick a needle here because the, the fibers will come over and swallow it. So keep that in mind that when you're embroidering on a towel, you wanna do bold embroidery. You don't wanna do thin simple embroidery so like in this instance i'm just going to put a name on this towel um i have a couple of font options that you probably can't see because the camera is so far away let me try and bring it a little bit closer uh, but there's a couple of font options on this screen that you can choose from and there's thin ones and there's thicker ones so you definitely want to shoot for the thicker options of fonts so that you don't have to worry about your embroidery sinking down into the pile. That's your first step. That's your first step. Finding a pile friendly embroidery design. Okay. Because you don't want to do a whole bunch of thin lines and then when you take it off, you're going to be upset. Even if you use the water soluble on top, it's still going to sink down eventually as you wash this towel the piles are going to overtake that thin embroidery so you want to keep it bold bold thick designs not super dense and super thick but you want thick satin stitches are perfect for towels okay so now that we know that you got to first pick a nice bold design then once you do that we're going to put this water soluble on top okay so water soluble stabilizer my water soluble stays in plastic because water soluble any type of moisture humidity things of that nature will eat this up and it'll weaken it and destroy it so i keep mine in plastic and it puts me in the mind of you know just a thin film uh like when i was in school and i would spread elmer's glue on my hand and then after it dried peel it off and it looked like your skin you know creepy well maybe i was the only creepy kid but um peel it off that's what this reminds me of and it smells like it too a little bit it smells like elmer's glue so i'm gonna cut this all right and i could cut as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it. I was going to be lazy and just lay it on top just like that, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and cut it. I'm not going to go the lazy route tonight, not with that. All right, so I'm going to slide this under there and lay that on top, okay? And then I'm going to be uber responsible and put my, my stabilizer back where it belongs because I'm bad about forgetting and this is too big of a roll so I have all of this go to waste. All right. And I'm going to tape that up and fix that. All right, so we're going to put this back because we're done with that for right now. Okay. So we got our stabilizer. 
we have our towel stuck to the stabilizer with you can either use stick glue or spray adhesive entirely up to you or pin it or just let it lay there and do a basting stitch any one of those can work uh, but I prefer to not suggest that you pin it and then we are going to go ahead and put this hoop on the machine this is four by four okay so this is just laid on top nothing special about that and I'm going to have to re-thread my machine for whatever reason it was un it was not threaded and I don't think a little three-year-old monster came and did that but it's a good possibility we ain't gonna worry about it alrighty and pull that through so really simple that's how you can hoop a towel that's how you can hoop a towel so miss dextra if you're looking to do towels it's as simple as that okay so just because i want to we're gonna put um i'm gonna just put my name actually just keep it simple I haven't done, let's see, next, the, okay. There we go. All right, so my name is in there. I have the thing hooped. It's gonna fit because it wouldn't let me do all three letters if it wasn't gonna fit. I have it centered. So now we're going to drop the foot and we're gonna hit go. Now keep in mind, when you thread this machine, the foot has to be up so that it doesn't cause you problems because it will not get in the tension discs if the foot isn't up okay so the foot is now down let's hit go and we're going to let that stitch out meanwhile don't do what i just did Don't ever stick your hands in near the needle. That's not good, but I'm bad and do it, unfortunately, quite often. And I'm gonna slide y'all closer. Easy peasy, and while that's stitching that pretty satin stitch, I'm gonna check the check. So while that's stitching, I'm going to check the chat real quick and see where do we go? Where do we go? Um, oh, sorry about that box, Willa Allen. Hopefully it's better. I probably should have took that chat away. I'll do it when we get back over there. All right. Um... Harmony Ling Ling got the 16 needle rolling while you have your soundproof headset on and join the live feed. You're welcome. You're welcome. And congratulations again on your six needle. Leela Nelson, where do you get a sharp tear stabilizer? I got some that's hard to tear. Um, You can get perforated stabilizer uh, from a couple of different places actually uh, Tex Mac is one where I get my perforated uh, You also can get it from Madeira. Unfortunately the um, Unfortunately the perforated is kind of pricey The perforated is kind of pricey. Do you all find any difference in which side of the water soluble you have facing up? Miss Marge says no, I do not I have not rather I have not not as of yet anyway Look at that thing bunching up over there. Hold on. Uh-oh, my needle, I mean, my uh, thread got snagged, so I'm gonna have to cut that, hold on. I hate it in there. I don't know why my thread gets snagged like that sometimes, but it does, so that's gonna be messed up. I got that fixed. 
my thread got snagged so i had to take that a loose so definitely babysit your machines when you're working for them when you're working on them rather uh, let's see let's see Mary Ann says it holds the stitches through washes. Inspiration and wash the light. Yas. Wash away, tear away again comes from TexMac. And I'll get that website and put it in the chat. Let's see. TexMac is direct. There we go. All right, just for those of you interested in the wash away, tear away, or perforated, there's the link in the chat. Hey, American Eagle Embroidery and Graphics. Thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member and welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, let's see. Um, Lori, the name of it, there's no name per se. It's just the wash away, tear away. So if you click that link and go into the stabilizer backing, you'll see a wash away, tear away option. I ordered some washcloths for a customer and used cutaway. I had so much trouble getting the pieces out of the embroidery, so I learned to use tear away or wash away and not cut away. Yas, Angelia, yas. I'm trying to tell you. And see, that's the thing. Technically, you shouldn't get the pieces out of the embroidery. When you use cutaway, you just cut out around the design. That's not um, using the... Uh, that popping stuff is going to act monkey. And then too, if you're using, like you see how my stabilizer is all bunched up looking and crap. If you're using um, bold enough um, and bold and dense enough satin stitches, you kind of sometimes don't even need the topping. But because I didn't hold that stabilizer, that uh, topping down, it's going to bunch up some. Um... My customer was trying to say I charged her too much. Honey, don't let your customer tell you that you charged her too much. Your charges are your charges. And I don't care if you charged $100 a towel. Because in my opinion, uh, what's that? Louis Vuitton, I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was Louis Vuitton, either Chanel. Came out with a face shield. You know, the face shields that we wear, you know, for COVID types. Of, well, some people wear it. I, I don't wear them. The face shield, their face shield is a thousand dollars. Is it in my do I have the right to tell them that they're charging too much for their face shield? No, I don't have that right because that's their product, that's their name that's on it, and they can charge what they want. So, if your customer is telling you that you charge too much, then it's you know, she may not be a good customer for you because I'm a firm believer in you need to charge what your worth is. I'm, I was bad about that. Letting other people tell me what I should charge and I ended up not enjoying my business. So I had to change that. And it took an excellent business manager um, and a very caring and loving husband to help me understand that I need to charge my worth. And once I started doing that, I love my job now. <laughs> I love what I do. So it, it's easier now that I'm able to make a profit, whereas before I wasn't really making a profit. Um, do we use the stabilizer thickness depends on the towel's fluffiness? Mm. Actually, the stabilizer thickness doesn't have as much to do, Monica, with the fluffiness of the towel as it does on the thickness of the embroidery design itself. That's what the stabilizer is for, actually. Your stabilizer is there for your stitches. Your stitches pretty much only. That's what your stabilizer is for. Your stabilizer is to support your embroidery, not necessarily the item itself, okay? So our embroidery has stopped. 
let me switch my uh, camera. Go ahead and grab this off. And as I said, my thread got snagged. So let's take this over so that y'all can see it in the light. And switch our camera over. All right. Why did the ham sandwich get my camera end up down like that? Oh, my God. Y'all didn't want to see all that. Okay. All right. So here is just simple. Just my name. It looks kind of ratchet right now, and I'll show you why. Give me a moment. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you the back. So you see it pulled away from that because, because my thread, see how that that's connected? Whoops, sorry. See how that's connected right there, and it's snagged. And it got caught under the presser foot. So that was not, that had nothing to do with, the stabilizer, it had nothing to do with the towel. It was all, I think I need a new needle, actually, I think is what the issue is. But one way or the other, the thread got jammed. And had the tearaway not given, it probably would have bird nested or something crazy under the machine, but it didn't. All right, so here's our topping. We just pull that off, and we can actually pull the whole thing off of this if we wanted to, or I could have unhooped it first and then pulled it off either way um and now that we have that off all i'm doing is looking at this stuff under there i can't it drives me insane y'all just so particular so particular for nothing all right and now i'm going to trim these threads that got caught and messed up my letter e stupid threads all right and again, all I'm doing is trimming these jump stitches. And notice how the, the, the bold, thick, the thick, wide line satin columns, those thick satin. Now, this is just the font that was in the embroidery machine. This wasn't digitized for this. This wasn't something I bought. I just used the letters that were in the machine, something simple, and put the letters out there. And I looked for the thickest font that I had on there because this is a pile. You know what? We ought to, what time is it? It's 10 o'clock. We ought to do a test stitch out to show you what it looks like when it's a thin font. But for right now, just something simple. Nice and centered. Looks great because it was, ooh, ooh, ooh another secret. I'm going to give you all another secret. Uh, and of course, I don't have any right here near me to, to give you my secret. I don't understand, y'all. Why? Oh, 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 wait a minute. Oh. Nope, and it ain't even nothing in here. That's what's jacked up. Uh, um, yep, I got some right here. Hold on. I'm going to show you something. So, when you hoop things, a lot of times people complain about hooping <clears throat> their items because they get hoop burn. But I'm going to show you what I do to get rid of hoop burn, okay? Simple, 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 simple. Hoop burn is annoying to a lot of us. Come on, great. There we go. Thank you. Why is that jacked up like that? Lord. <sighs> the things you find. Okay. So I use chalk to uh, mark this, right? So usually with chalk, I just kind of brush it off, you know, blah, blah. But I still have this hoop burn all the way around. So what I do is spritz it. A light spritz of water, nothing heavy or major, and then rub it. And once I do that, barely see any hoop burn, especially at the top. Let's go around the bottom. And rub it. Rub, rub, rub. Rub, rub, rub. And that gets rid of, for the most part, gets rid of my hoop burn. You can still see it in the in the light a little bit. But, of course, I'll go and rub until I just can't see it much anymore. And then go from there. There's something right there. All right. That's how I get my hoop burn out of my towels. 
Okay, so bold fonts. What what did we learn so far? You want to hoop it, or you can float it. Floating isn't super difficult. Um, you can use spray adhesive. You can use um, pens. I don't recommend it, but you can. You can use glue stick if possible. If you don't have any spray glue, you can use uh, a basting stitch that might be built into your embroidery machine. You can look it up uh, in your manual to see if you have a basting stitch built into your machine. Um, or if you're using a design that you put together like in Sew It Pro, Sew It Pro has a basting stitch option that you can put around the outside of your design and that'll hold it in place as well. And that way you don't need any glue or anything like that. So several different options that are available for hooping a towel. You want to make sure that you mark and line where your design is going to go so that if anything gets deregistered or it, if for whatever reason it comes out of the hoop or whatever and you want to hoop it again, you have your marks. Your marks are still there that you can go by and fix a problem that might have arisen. Um, and water soluble stabilizer goes on, on the top to help hold this pile in place. But if you um, have a thick enough satin column for your design, if it's thick enough, you may not even need the water soluble stabilizer on top. Um, and there's also a thing called a tack down stitch. I have a video on that. So if you want to go and check that out on hooping a towel and embroidering on a towel, the, the knock down stitch or tack down stitch, it'll show you how that works as well. And it's really cool with a towel. Okay. So I'm going to go and check. Uh, love floating with the basting stitch. Gail Whitaker says steamer works really well for the uh, hoop burn. Yas. Pretty much kind of sort of the same principle in a way. You're using the water and then heating it up with your hands and, and distressing the pile to help get rid of that. Um, she said you can rub with the other end of the towel too. Right. Yes, you can. You did a towel? Please make sure you post it in the hoop group, ma'am. I would love to see it. I would love to see it. Y'all's clients pay everybody else except their seamstress or designer. We're not going to go there tonight. <laughs> uh, Angela says, I would not be doing any more work for her. I explained what I charge to show her sampling. She okayed everything, but I've learned my lesson. Yas, 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 yas. And thank you, Rulu Wa, for a good tip for the hoop burn. I appreciate that. Oh, Miss Bickham, the resident expert for. Sometimes she says the steam also gets rid of the pieces of salvi, the salvi on top as well. So yas, Marianne did the bath roll with the knock knockdown stitch. Knockdown stitches are total awesome sauce. Yes, they are. All right. Um, let me see. Let me see. How tall are the letters on your towel? I use the letters that were in the machine, so I. Don't, it didn't, well, actually it did give me a measurement, but I didn't pay attention to it. So let me grab my ruler. These letters are an inch, roughly? Roughly an inch. Maybe, maybe like an inch and the smooth, no, they're, they're an inch. They're an inch tall. Um, all money is not good money, Latasha said. They'll probably be the customer that you can't satisfy anyway. They'll probably complain about everything else. I really felt bad after that. I guess since I only charged five for masks, I guess she figured that embroidery would be cheap as well. And no, ma'am, it will not. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, so. Is sublimation the same as direct to garment? No, Susan, it is not. It is not. Sublimation, um, with sublimation, the ink becomes a permanent part of the garment, whatever it is that you're sublimating on. Um, direct to garment, that's pretty much screen printing in a way, but with ink, with a different type of ink. So, well, not really screen printing. Let me back up because that was actually a wrong thing to say. Direct to garment is when they print the ink 
design directly on the shirt. And it's a similar ink to screen print ink, but the printer prints it out just like your regular printer would print out an image on your printer. It prints out the image very similarly on the surface of the shirt. Sublimation, you don't have to pre-treat your shirt. It just has to be a polyester or polyester blend shirt. Direct to garment, you have to pre-treat the surface of the shirt or purchase shirts that are pre-treated already. Um, so there's several differences between sublimation and direct to garment. Um, and as Eddie Jr. mentioned, sublimation is printed to the transfer paper first and then you press it onto a shirt, whereas direct to garment, it's printed directly on the shirt, which is why it's called direct to garment. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. If I missed any, one minute. Well, I did just see something. Would this be the same setup for working on a minky fleece blanket? Yes. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Michelle Rosencraz sees some holiday kitchen towels in your kitchen this year and holiday presents for family members. Towels are a very, very simple, very simple, easy to do gift for folks. I mean, it just really is. And they're quick to do. They're quick to get out and just really simple. I love them. And like I said, Miss Dextra, that was on a 4x4. So even a 5x7, you can go much larger on a towel. Um, and then if you get your uh, repositional hoop for your 5x7, you can even go bigger than that. All right. Um, all right. So let me go all the way back down. How do you keep from getting bird's nest on the back, Renee? Usually... There's a couple of things that causes bird nests. Uh, one of the first things I suggest is make sure that your stabilizer is smooth, like it's about, like a drum, just like I mentioned earlier. Also, make sure that your thread is threaded properly from the top. Your thread isn't getting caught on anything. It's not getting snagged. It's not getting hung. Make sure your presser foot is up when you thread the machine. Make sure your needle is good, good working condition. I would say install a new needle and make sure that your bobbin is wound properly and installed properly. Those things usually are the call. Any one of those are usually the main culprits behind bird nesting, but usually it's the thread up top. Usually it's the thread up top. It hadn't been threaded correctly or the thread is getting stuck and you don't see it. That's why usually when I'm sitting and I'm babysitting my machine, I'll sit and watch my thread as it's coming off of the spool for a minute to make sure that everything's good and it's coming off nice and smooth and I don't have any issues or anything like that before I panic and be like, oh my God, what's going on? I check my thread path, make sure everything's good and clear. Okay. When you use the basting stitch, add it over the saw pin. All will be nice and neat. That is an excellent tip. I appreciate that. Definitely. Where do you get your baby blankets from, Colette asks. Usually, I use um, blankets that I've made myself in most instances. Uh, even though lately, I haven't done any baby blankets because I'm trying to get out of doing blankets. They're a pain. Making the blankets are a pain, in my opinion. So, I don't, I don't do them much anymore. So, what I generally choose to do is purchase pre-done pre blankets. And then, I'll embroider those. So... Um, I did not use a ballpoint needle. I use a regular sharp embroidery needle. Ballpoint, because the towel isn't stretchy. A towel is just a towel. Usually it doesn't stretch like, you know, like this fabric stretches. I would use ballpoint with this. Towels don't stretch, so you can use just a regular needle. I also use fonts that go into a thin point and it looks very nice. I also make sure my solvy is kept taut. I have no issues with fonts that get narrow on towels. Well, that's good. Um, depending on the towel and like you said, if you're using Solvi, it does help. It does definitely help. Alrighty. So now that we've done the front, let's do something funky and spunky on the thick plushy towel while we got 45 minutes left. Um, I'm trying to think, should I do wonder how long this would take if I did this design. Oh, no, not over there, over here. 
my dogs are acting up, y'all. I apologize. I don't know who is outside or what somebody is doing. My neighbors might be doing something, and so the dogs are acting up. Um, no, it's just talk. Um, what y'all want to see on the towel? Um, I think. I'm trying to find I'm trying to find a really cute what's a face design, but they usually take well no, it actually doesn't usually take too terribly long. Let me see. Um, hey Aaron L, how are you? Welcome. Oh man, this is gonna take forever. When you say direct the garment, does that mean you're using pigment ink? Um, it's not a pigment ink, Sandra. It's a it's thicker than a pigment ink because you can you can feel it on the surface of the shirt. Um, so that's why initially I said a screen print is similar to a screen print because it's kind of similar in feel. Screen print is actually a bit thicker than the ink that they use for direct to garment. But it's not like your regular ink that's in your printer. If you were to print on a piece of paper, you can't feel that. But it's it's a bit thicker than that. So you can actually feel it on the surface of the shirt. Someone asked if you show the back of the towel. I sure will. Here's the back. And I still have some um, tearaway, fuzzy tearaway on the back of it. That's kind of bright. Why is it so, so darn bright? Sorry, I don't know. Hold on, let's do this. Oh my goodness. Let's turn this down. Okay, now. Can you see that better? There we go. That's the back of the towel. So we still have some... Uh, you know, do flatty on it or whatever. But because this is wash away, tear away, all of this will wash away. I mean, I can take the time and peel all this extra off of it, you know, pull it apart and whatnot, trim up my jump stitches and everything, and then throw it in the wash. The sewing bread, I won't turn on my machine for $5. I know that's, I know that's right. I've done it, but. Okay, so let me go back to this. Oh no, I said that was gonna take too long because I don't I don't want to drag y'all out. Let's go here and let's find something simple. Something simple, 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 simple. That was pretty. You guys, Miss Bickham has been doing embroidery for quite some time. She, Miss Debbie Kidd, we got a lot of long timers in here that I definitely appreciate being a part of the Hoop Group. And also, if you're just joining us, I want to, um, again, emphasize that you are more than welcome to join our Hoop Group. Well, that's cute. I think I'm going to do this. Ooh, I like this one better. Well, I don't know which one I like better. I think I'm going to do this one. Yeah. I'm going to do this one. You guys will get to see. Ah, shoot. I forgot I have stuff. Oh, cool. I already bought it. Yeah. So I don't have to buy it again. Okay, six, nine. Yeah, one, 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 eight, four, seven. Yay. I already bought it. Y'all, that's awesome. Somebody said what? I could listen all night. Oh, Miss Susan Green, I'm glad you're having fun. Thank you. 
I've done split monogram with family name on towels for gifts, easy and quick Christmas wedding, etc. gifts. Hello, Trisha. How are you? You got an Epson 4700 Echo Tank. Oh, oh. Congratulations on your new Essence 4700 Echo Tank. Holler. You're welcome, Denise Robertson. Marianne, I'm on Juju. No, I'm not on Juju. Not tonight. All right. So let me see. Lord, I hope this will reach. I purchased the machine, but I did not know it was going to be 10 feet long. <laughs> You always get the big babies, though. All right, so I'm going to put this design on my machine real quick. All right, so I'm going to drag this design over. Ouch. Oh, wrong computer. Uh, there we go. Boom, just like that. And this is a four by four, so it's a little small for this big old towel, but we're going to um, be able to do it anyway. And how many stitches is this? 12, 13,000 stitches. So hopefully we'll have time for this to finish stitching out. All right. Um, All right, you guys, so I'm going to switch us over to the other camera again. And then we'll do this bigger towel. Boom! Love it. Love, love, love it. All right, so... Let's do this. All right. So now that we're back over here, my bottom thread does not look like it's going to survive this particular stitch out. Whoops. Sorry. I didn't mean to kick the camera. Let's see. Oh, look at my gnarly. Um, okay. All right. So here I tend to find the side opposite the tag. Now this is one of my, this is my towel, one of our towels, rather this old as dirt, but it's still super fluffy and plush, which is why I chose it. And I'm going to go through the exact same process as far as finding the center um, is concerned. The only thing is, as you see, this is much, much bigger. And I'm probably going to change from this light colored chalk to uh, my water, water soluble ink. Let me see. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, I can barely see it. So we can, we might can use it. And being that I'm on the four by four machine, I'm just going to um, put this kind of close to the line on the towel because the four by four design is gonna be pretty small. So I'm just gonna put it in the center right in here but I'm a stickler. I could fold the towel in half and find the center that way, but I'm just weird and prefer to do with measuring tape. Even with me not liking math, my husband would be proud. Okay, so 14 and a half is the center. Let me make sure, double checking and triple checking. Yep, 14 and a half is right here. Oh, I can see that. Nice. All right, and I took my ruler over yonder, so let me grab it. Ha! My machine looked like a ghost. <laughs> huh, there he is. Don't pay me no attention. 
All right, and so what I'm going to do is get this line parallel to the stripe on the towel and I'm going to move it up just a smidge like right in here and line it up and so now I'm going to actually like to do even though this is overkill I'm making this line like really long for no reason let me see perfect 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 all right so there's my marking so if anything happens and my towel shifts out of the way like it's not supposed to or whatever I can easily line things back up because I have the markings on my towel this is one of the first things I do with every project every 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 project and if you do multiple projects like I do for instance I have um, duffel bags that I work on regularly well with those oh I left the hoop all the way over there with those duffel bags once I measure the first one and get the measurements for the center of the first one it just makes it super easy for me to go back and bam same measurement for each one after that so I keep all my stuff marked and when those girls are lined up with their bags on every last one of them is lined up properly so that's um, a must for myself all right so here we go we're gonna hoop we've already marked our towel I'm gonna hoop the stabilizer only and make sure that the top is at the top bottom is at the bottom make sure it's nice and snug I don't have to tighten it as long as it's laying flat once I push this down in it's gonna automatically tighten a little bit more once I push those two hoops in together okay so there's our drum that's what we're looking for all right so I have my side marks to show where to lay my towel um I think for this one I'm gonna do like I did before and just spray the back of the towel so that I don't get that on my hoop and then I'm going to lay this big towel on my hoop okay Oh, there it is. Couldn't find my center. Look at that. That heifer was on point. Didn't even know it. All right. And now this one is where? It's right there. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now this probably isn't centered, but nope, it is not. Can't get them all. So let's move this over a smidge. And get that centered. Let's see, are you on center? Nope. Oh my gosh, dog. My daughter's dog, him, has a big old bark. He's a shepherd mixed with a Rottweiler, so he's gonna have a bigger bark than most dogs. Let's see. Oh, there we go. I couldn't find the center. All right. All right. Let me double check this. Yas, yas, yas. Okay. Glue on the back. Stabilizer is taut. The towel is on top. The sticky it spray adhesive is on the back. It's holding on to my towel. So now I'm going to have to carefully. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Stop the press. We got to make sure that our bobbin thread because this this isn't gonna last too much longer as you see so give me a sec let me grab a fresh bobbin from somewhere um where someone asked me one time before where I store my bobbins how do I store my bobbins and this is how I store my bobbins um not my 100% favorite way to store them but it works so that I keep down problemos and unfortunately because I have so many different types of machines 
I have to be super careful when I find like and just looking this bobbin and this bobbin may look the same in a way but they're not they're two different sizes so I have to be super careful in making sure that I grab the right size bobbin like these are the right sizes and there's a navy there's a baby blue so I'm gonna grab the baby blue and we're gonna do this in baby blue this time I was gonna do white I really want to do white but nah we're gonna do baby blue Right. So bobbins are not put back, but they're put off to the side and I'm going to make sure that my bobbin is being installed correctly. So for this machine, the thread is coming off to the left and then you put it in and swing it back around and cut the tail. And for whatever reason, I've lost my cover. So I don't have one, excuse me. And let me grab the baby blue from off of the other machine. Excuse me again. And then let's rethread our machine. And then the blue, you guys will be able to see it. So the process, now this is something else that I absolutely love, love, love um, to do with towels. It's called embossing. And I'm sure for those of you who do embroidery quite frequently, you know what the embossing is. But I love the embossed look on towels. So with embossing, you generally don't have to put water soluble stabilizer on top. You can, but you don't have to. And it's because it's going to use the thick fibers of the towel to um, make the design of the towel and then tack down the parts of the towel that doesn't need to be sticking up and you'll see what I mean once this is done so I'm gonna go ahead bring in my design and it's only one color because embossing generally is just one color and the cool thing about embossing is you can use embossing and use the exact same color of the towel so if you use like this is white and use white on the top and white on the back, it blends in with the fibers of the towel and it looks like you cut out the design in the fibers of the towel. It's really cool. I absolutely love it. Looks like you carved the embroidery design in the towel. That's kind of what embossing puts me in the mind of. All right. So this is a whole lot of thick fluffy towel. So be careful when you do thick fluffy stuff on your embroidery machine because you don't want to shift the um, towel in the hoop because it's being floated. All right, so let's go ahead and get this put on the machine. All right, and then my needle is dead center right there. Look at that, total awesome sauce. And what I'm gonna do is kind of like tuck this over here to the side so that I don't have to worry about it coming back over onto, actually let's tuck it this way. So it won't come back over onto my thing. All right, so my bobbin is in there, my thread is up top, I have my design loaded. Don't know how long it's gonna take to stitch, but we're gonna stitch it out anyway. So let's go ahead and hit go. And as I mentioned, the way this design works, it the reason I didn't put the water soluble on top is because we're doing an embossed design so it's going to tack down the fibers of this towel so the embroidery thread itself is going to hold the fibers down in the areas of the towel where the design wants the fibers down okay so as it goes a little bit further i'll zoom in with the camera and show you even closer with the camera and show you how that works all right so let's tilt that down some more
and we'll show you I'm gonna let that stitch just a little bit more and then I'll show you brought you over here with me wow that stitches oh man y'all can barely see that stupid light is super bright on that thing what about sticky stabilizer will that work isabel with the sticky stabilizer it will work the problem with sticky stabilizer is though it it will it's harder to get away from the back of the towel okay so for instance let me let me switch this actually and we'll go back to that here in a minute okay so just to show you what i mean like for instance you see how the stabilizer is right here in the e in the branches of the e i mean you already have to kind of like dig this out uh to get that stabilizer out of there so because it's not sticky you know you got to work it out and, and get it out of there and peel it off but if this was sticky stabilizer that would have been much more difficult to do because the sticky is doing its job it's going to stay stuck to the back of the towel and when i did do that on a towel it it really didn't look good because i couldn't get rid of it um even washing it some of that sticky stabilizer was still stuck to the back of the towel so I generally don't recommend sticky stabilizer for the backs of towels um, because we struggle enough to try and get regular tear away off of the back of this pile without, oh, see, I just did it, without pulling the pile thread. See, if, I don't know if you can see that, how I pulled the stabilizer and then I pulled one of the pile fibers. So now this fiber is sticking up looking crazy on the back of this towel. And that's not what you want. You don't want to disrupt the fibers, you know. So it's just better to not use sticky stabilizer, not with tile, towel fabrics or pile. Um, Shadow is going crazy trying to find Max and Daisy. <laughs> Tell Shadow, I'm sorry. What is the name of the place you get the wash away, tear away stabilizer? I don't see the link. I will link it again. Um, it was called Tex-Mac. Um, direct here it is textmacdirect.com and you have to scroll the ways back but I'll put it again right here um, I purchased the machine but I did not know it was going to be ten oh I was sorry I read that already what's the name of the place okay there's that there's that there's that you have that exact ironing board cover Andrea says yes I'm about ready to change it though because something's wrong with the ironing board and it keeps staining my covers so it's just annoying um you're welcome to sewing Brett I'm sorry I missed your message Hi, Jackie Maddox. Welcome. Weddings Designs. Love your name. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Is there any use for bobbin thread leftovers? Ooh, one of the main things that I saw uh, for bobbin, you mean like just those extra stray threads? Someone said keep collecting them in a container and then leave them outside for the birds to build nests with in the spring um but other than that mm -mm. eve mar welcome thank you for joining us no worries no worries uh felicia storm welcome thank you for being a youtube group member i appreciate that cleone welcome from montego bay jamaica Mon love Runaway Bay, actually. I've been to Runaway Bay and absolutely love it there. Um, 
you can store all of the same bottoms together and write the name of the machine on the cases. Shut up. Shut up. Why? You see what I'm saying? That's why I love y'all. That's why I love y'all. Now, could I have used that information about two years ago? Yeah, yeah, I could have. I could have. But it's all right. We grow and we learn from one another. And that, my dear, is a marvelous suggestion. Very simple. I absolutely love it. Thank you, Ronnie's Raps. I will be doing that this evening. This evening. Personality six. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you. I understand about life. Um, you got a just got an Epson ET fifteen thousand for sublimation. You said it's been a while since you've been here, but girl, you already know what the deal is. So, Miss Personality Six, congratulations on your new Epson ET Echo Tank fifteen thousand. <laughs> yes, congratulations on your new baby. Absolutely love it. By the way, I like what you've done with your hair, girl. Oh, the struggle today was real. Um, but thank you. Yep, I had to. I took the time and fooled with that flat iron, and it was awful. I need to get it cut. This stuff is so ratty and all over the place. Is I gotta get it cut. But I've just been busy moving and getting things moving. And here in a moment, I'm gonna show y'all what the tack down stitch looks like. I absolutely love it. I love the look of embossing towels. Never did it. Yeah. Love embossing towels. Love. 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 Does the embossing design come on your machine? No, Renee Brown. It does not. But I will go ahead and post the link to... Um, actually, let me do it this way. Make it easier for you guys. I'm going to go to my website and put in... Let's do it this way. There we go. Here is one of my favorite embroidery design websites and all of their embossed designs. And they have tons of beautiful embossed designs. So I put that link in the chat as well. Save all my thread scraps in a bucket. And when I have enough, you can freehand stitch over threads sandwiched between salty to make earrings. Oh, that's cute. Sticky stabilizer can also pull the loops of the towel. Yes, it can. It can. It can. Sunny O'Neill. I actually I usually use Pellon 541 on the back of my towel. So Pellon is another um, stabilizer that can work. Michi Black. Hello. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Sticky spray I used was an old machine embroidery spray. I don't know where I got it from, so I wouldn't even know how to tell you where I got it or how you can get it, but I'll show you what it looks like once I get back over to the machine. Rita Young, welcome from Australia. Thank you for joining us from Down Under. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Contessa Harris, hello to you, and thank you for joining us, and thank you very much for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Pearl Lucas uses her leftover threads to make art quilts. I'm going to have to start saving my threads and send them to these folks who do this fancy stuff with them because I don't. <laughs> oh, Cleone. Oh, man, I would love to. Oh, don't get it twisted. And it's funny. Uh, I have a funny story from that. And that's what my uh, husband, before he and I got married, I was going to move to Runway Bay. Um, I had my daughter and I was kind of fed up with some things in life and I was like, I'm just moving. I'm moving to Runaway Bay. I loved it there. Loved everybody I met there. Had somewhat of a family there. I'm going back. I'm just, I'm just going. And my husband, we were friends at the time and I told him, I said, well, I'm about to move to Jamaica anyway. He was like, why would you move there? Because I want to. He was like, well, you should find a reason to stay here. I'm like, for what? What reason do I have? He was like, you stay here for me. No. Sorry. No, I'm about to move. What? Wait a minute. What? Why would I stay here for you? <laughs> and long story short, we were married 21 years this year. Uh, Felicia Storm, thank you for being a YouTube group member. And she says, I finally got my new baby Epson W. F 7720 and a new surgery heavy duty sewing machine and I also had a printer up and running. I did the dance where I'm going to do the bell. Yeah! Yes! Hello! 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 Hello!
Uh, dance too, dance too. <laughs> Congratulations, Felicia Storm. That is totally awesome. And awesome sauce on two machines, two babies you got going on. So that's what's up. Miss Bickham says, remember my bag of thread? I saved them and placed them in pieces of yarn between two pieces of salve and just stitch all over it to catch them making fabric out of it. It makes a beautiful scarf. I don't remember that. I'm sorry. I probably should, but I don't. But that's not a bad idea. Alrighty, you guys, let's switch cameras. And I would love to show you what this embossing tech down looks like. Stop it. I hate to stop it. I swear I do because it's taking away time. But I want to zoom in or take this off and take it closer and show you the embossing. And I don't want to take it off of the machine because this does have the tear away on the back. So the tear away might tear if I take it off of the machine. So give me a sec to get myself unhooked from around the machine and I don't know if this light is tearing us up because I don't know how okay there we go all right so can you see how the pile is tacked down look at the difference in the the pile that's sticking up out here versus what's sticking up right here so it basically holds the fibers down for you without having to use the solve on top now it's not super perfect because you can still see some fibers sticking up just a little bit but for the most part it's held down really good so that you can uh, see that embroidery a lot better once it's all finished so we'll start that back up and let that finish hopefully it's almost done i don't know so that i don't run out of time on it Put y'all back up here. I absolutely love the look of embossing. It is just gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And we'll let that continue. While I check the chat again, make sure I don't have any questions. Just look up their designs, lots of beautiful ones. Yes, 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 yes. Hey, Leslie Ram, how are you? Welcome, and thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member. Beth Price says, over 20 years, you need to give your honey a ring on that bell. <laughs> um, I'll let him know that. I'll let him know that. I definitely will. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Y'all, I done done something to my machine. See, that's why I didn't want to stop it. I swear I didn't. Hold on, let me change the microphone. I ain't never heard it make that noise before. But keep in mind, this is a lot of towel. A lot of towel. Yep, it got caught somewhere. And see if I it says the safety device was activated and had I not stopped it, it probably would have. Um, so let me show you now. I'm glad this happened because I don't want to move the camera either. Okay, so whenever something goes wrong, which when you ain't standing over your project, it generally does. When something goes wrong, the first thing I do is check and see what's different what looks off what's wrong what's right okay one of the things that i see off gate which i don't know how well you can see this but this thread is not a smooth path coming from the top cone it's looped around right here that's not good so this could be the problem i don't know yet but 
that is not a good thing so I'm gonna keep that in mind but one of the first things I'm gonna do is try and straighten it out and make sure okay is it caught somewhere or something why is it looped like that so that's how I problem solve um it's let me make sure it pull okay so it's pulling off of the comb easily so I don't it shouldn't be feeding incorrectly that way okay but you never know that's one thing I'm looking at um it's kind of looks like everything's fine right there so I'm just gonna straighten that back out all right now when I tried to turn the hand wheel I can't go pull it all the way up see it's getting stuck but I can go down some let's see how far down I can go okay so it goes all the way down so it's not too terribly jammed because if it's bird nested and locked up really really bad a lot of times I can't move it up or down so then my next step is to see just how much I can see what damage has been going on up under here and I'm gonna try not to tear my stabilizer but when you got tear away it's really hard to peep up under here and see what's going on I'm gonna see if I can see anything and it looks like it's pulled it down in there but I don't know so I can try and hit the scissor cut button but I don't think that's gonna be helpful so I'm gonna cut my thread right here since I was able to pull the thread up I mean the needle up some I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this thread right here to help take some of the tension off from below and lift my foot carefully and see if I can lift it the rest of the way up nope so it's caught on my bobbin somewhere okay because your bobbin has to spin to help move that up and down as well so being that I can't move it up so something's going on pretty bad down below so let's take a look and see what's going on so I'm gonna carefully lift it from off the hooks over here and see if I can okay so it does come off but look I can't even I can't pull it so it did get bird nested down in there somewhere and how bad is it okay I can see it I want to show it to y'all I swear I do but I also don't want to take the camera off the thing so what do you do when it bird nests well one of the coolest things the easiest things not coolest one of the easiest things I have found but you have to be really 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 careful with it though these little craft knives from Dollar Tree the reason why I like these and like using these is because I can extend it all the way out and not have to struggle to reach up and it's thin to get up under that hoop okay the only thing though is if my towel is wedged down in there too if I use this and I'm not careful to leave it close to the throat plate it could cut my towel too so you can use this as an option but just be really 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 careful okay so I'm looking up under here trying to see and make sure my towel isn't down in there and it doesn't look like it but I'm gonna take a chance and cut this anyway Put right there there we go yep and it looks like it was just thread so that's a good thing okay so I've cut it loose now I'm going to be really careful, make sure my foot is up, and pull this off. And now I should be able to pull this needle up a little bit more, which I was. So yes, that was an issue. Y'all know we can't have a show without having an issue of some kind, don't you? Oh man, look at that. It's wrapped all around that darn bobbin. Look. Okay, so that didn't get jacked up too bad but it must have been a whole lot of threads right here and the tension must have been off some so let's see another problem too could be wrong size bobbin as well I forgot to mention that earlier 
But look at all of that. <gasps> no! Yeah. yeah oh, oh no! Look what happened, y'all. That's crazy. Look at that. Have you ever seen a bobbin break? Is that new to you like it's new to me? Never in a zillion years seen that happen. So that, my friends, is what happened and why I got a bird nest. My whole darn thing came apart and it pushed the thread up and so the thread couldn't swing around cleanly and just get the one thread. It was getting tons of thread and so it bird nested. So you pretty much just take the time and pull all of this mess out. Usually, usually when I get a bird nest, that's when I'm like, oh, time to clean out the whole darn machine. So I'll slide this forward, pull it out and look and make sure there are no other threads down in here somewhere and look. See, can you see that thread down in there? Can you see that one little thread? That will cause a problem. That will cause your machine to act monkey too. So that's why I take it all the way apart and I check all of this. Now I don't have my tweezers handy. My little thread getter outer kit isn't over here so I'm struggling so and then I look down up in there and I look at all my crazy gunk and lint and whatnot and get like oh my gosh so not only that I also need to actually clean out my bobbin area so that kind of sucks a little bit what I'm going to do because we are four minutes to time to be finished I'm going to finish this towel so I'm going to put all of this back together but instead of doing blue since it's broken I'm going to see if I can't find a white one and just finish it because I don't want to leave y'all with an unfinished project even though we did finish one but I want to finish both of them so let me put you back up here while I finish straightening up this mess. And it didn't help y'all that I don't have this cover plate. That didn't help. I'm sure that may have had something to do with this thing breaking because it's really important to have all everything the way it's supposed to be with these machines so that you don't cause yourself problems. But of course, your friend didn't have everything all together. So I'm gonna use this last little bit because it didn't look like it was too much left and hope that this one lasts like it's supposed to but that's why I said when it comes to trying to determine what's going wrong why is there an issue how do I fix it for me it's always trial and error and process actually process of elimination that's what it boils down to for me I like to check, recheck, rethread, make sure, look at the thread, look at what's different, look at what's wrong, and try to use that to help me determine what is wrong so that I can fix it. All right, so let's rethread. And I'm just going to stick with the blue on top because that's the top main color. And we are going to put this back on, but. As I mentioned too, that one area was super dense right in there. And I, I kind of don't like that. I don't like really, really dense designs on these smaller machines. So I'm probably gonna advance it a little bit to see if we can't get some past that. All right, and let's click you back into place. Okay. And let's put you back out of the way. And so to advance it, I just go to adjust. And then the middle button is the needle showing plus and minus. And then these two up here, the spools are color stops. I only have one color stop, so I don't want to hit that. But here are my stitches. So I'm just going to advance it a little bit past that. All right, I may be messing up my design some, I don't know, but I also don't wanna mess up my towel. So I'm gonna start from right here. Go back out to the main thing and 
See, that's a lot. When it's pulling, when it's pulling up, but that's the downside, somewhat of the downside for these smaller machines. When it's a lot of stitches in one area, you really need to babysit it and stop it from pulling up your project because that also will cause the jumping or flagging of your hoop will also cause bird nesting and thread problems. So this part of the design is pretty dense. I'm hoping it's not going to be too much more of this good. It look, yeah, it looks like it's moving out in a way. And going to something else. Okay. So we're going to let that stitch. I shouldn't walk away from it, but I'm going to take that chance and check the check. Right, hopefully we won't have any more issues over there and I probably shouldn't have said that but you know how it goes um Michi Black I am using what, what machine is this oh the SE425 SE425 is the machine I'm using hey Christy oh man welcome Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me tonight. What's the best thing to get nasty spray off of hoops? Alcohol, Dawn dish detergent, Sheila Cushenberry. From what I was told, just let it soak. Um, and it will eventually come off. Dawn is good for it. Or you can go to Dollar Tree and get some uh, awesome. And that should work too. Hey, Lisa Brown, how are you? Welcome. Michelle Rosencross, you have a good night as well. Ramona Middleton, thank you very much. I appreciate you telling me that. Thank you. Miss Social Day of Yellow's Craft Knives really, really come in handy. And Marge, yes, I know that cover causes a problem, but the jumping, flagging of that hoop definitely sucks. Ronnie's wrapped. I try so hard not to take that needle. <laughs> I hate putting no needles, changing needles. Uh, it's crazy. And Felicia Storm, that's the point. Learn from my mistakes. Learn from what I do wrong. I'm not afraid to show you all what I do that causes a problem because I'm hoping it will help someone else avoid a problem. Will a metal bobbin work in the case? Um, with that machine, you, okay, so it depends on your machine. Some machines can take a metal bobbin, some cannot. Was that blue thread, bobbin thread? No, Susan, but you can use, um, 40 weight, which is regular embroidery thread. You can use 40 weight in a bobbin. It doesn't cause a problem. Um, especially for decorative projects like what I'm doing. But also keep in mind, this is a 4x4 four four machine and I'm using a very thick towel in this machine. And certain parts of that design is dense and that's not really the best type of design to use with that small machine. It just really isn't. Um, it's not a heavy duty machine like my industrial machine. My industrial machine would eat that design for dinner. Um, but the smaller home machines are not made for that type of environment. So I don't know if you can hear it popping over there, but your machine shouldn't do that. That means whatever design you're putting on there is a little too dense. Um, but you know, we tend to push our stuff to the limit around here. Um, so I would definitely use caution with the dense designs.
and Pearl Lucas, if I had to turn it off and reset it, I definitely could have. Um, and I do have a video in showing how to reset it so that you can go back to where you were. Mm -hmm. Oh, clear Dollar Tree cutting board to fit the bobbin area. That would be smart. I really need to order a new cover. That's pretty much what I need to do. I just haven't done it yet. The Singer Touch and Sew from about 50 years ago had bobbins that screwed together. You could unscrew them and pull off thread you no longer wanted. Oh, that's neat. That's so cool. If the bottom of the work is kind of messy, you might think about slipping an extra piece of stabilizer under the hoop. It'll provide an extra smooth layer to slide over the bobbin plate if you have one. You gotta be kidding. Is That's actually very good information. I've had to do that in the past, but because Number one, I'm trying to get through this particular project <laughs> and get it over and done with. I didn't go that far with it. But the other thing that the other problem I have is sometimes that extra layer makes it even harder to get the um, stabilizer off from the back of it. So, but I shouldn't have that problem with me using wash away, tear away in my, in, in what I'm doing right now. But yes, you can. Felicia Storm uses goo off to clean her hoop, spray a small amount on a paper towel, wipe the hoop, and then wipe any residue. I can barely use, well, I don't know about goo goo off, but goo gone, I can't use that. The smell makes me sick. Shonda Coleman, I am embroidering a embossed design where it should say hers on the towel. It should say hers. So that's the plan. Long as everything goes through okay, I'm running a little bit over. But hopefully it won't be too much longer. Let me look. It's such a floral, such a floral looking design. Let me see how much longer I got on this thing. Go into Sew What Pro and do a sew out simulation. So it did that part already, and it's doing that part, and that part, and that part. It did that just a little while ago. Okay. We got a lot more to go, y'all, on this darn towel. So what I can do is stay on let y'all finish watching this darn thing and pour her out <laughs> oh my god and um wait until it finishes or i can post the finished product in the hoop group tomorrow it's entirely up y'all but my main thing is to show that yes you can embroider on a towel on a 4x4 machine by um hooping the stabilizer and floating the towel Ronnie's wraps, I think it does. I would have to go into the menu and see if it was with those machines. I don't know that I can fool with it too much while it's stitching. I would have to turn it off or not turn it off, but stop it, go into the menu, tell it to show me the stitches, and then let it start back up again. And I don't want to stop it. I swear I don't want to stop it. I want it to finish. <laughs> um, Michi says I bought a P500 some years ago. And one that stayed in the box for years and started using it this year. I bought a P800 a couple of weeks ago and I like it. Awesome sauce. The machines are totally cool. They're excellent for, you know, just your basic projects. Um, and you can make money off of them. Can you use a magnetic bobbin on these machines? I would not because I don't think the size is the right size. I've tried to use a magnetic bobbin on this machine and it bird nested so I automatically assume it's the wrong size. Could be wrong. Um, but you would need to check the size of the magnetic bobbin um, and then check the size requirement of the bobbin on this machine. I think Cause see, this machine uses, if I'm remembering correctly, this machine uses something like a SA15359 something or other. And some people think that that's the same thing as the 15 
the bobbin class 15 and it's not they're not the same bobbins if I'm remembering my my uh, research correctly so it's a completely different machine uh, bobbin size so you want to definitely use the bobbin size that comes with it good night Eve post it tomorrow get your rest we can wait until tomorrow to see the finished project Suzanne says Susan says staying on is fine walk by faith stay on <laughs> I can hang with you. I took a day off tomorrow. PC says you wouldn't have to use any adhesive on the second piece of stability. Yeah, no, I would float it under it. You gotta. I would definitely just slide it under there and let it float. Uh oh, the, hold on. That sounds good. That sounds like a change. It is a change. Yas. Okay, so them darn flowers is done. Oh, yeah, it's 10 minutes after 11. It's 10 minutes after 11. Which I don't mind, because one thing's for certain. When I crash, y'all, tonight, I'm going to crash. Good either way, but I know yours. Uh, I was tired before I came on. She was cushion berry. <laughs> you could slow the speed down on such a Miss Social Deb. The um, if I'm remembering correctly, I don't think I can slow the speed down on this thing. I know on my PE 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 -P -E 500, I couldn't. Um, but I think I can slide that thing and it'll slow down some. I'm not sure. But I want it to stay the fastest speed so it can be done. <laughs> oh my God. So the cool thing is, if I'm remembering correctly, let's see. Let me double check and make sure I'm not fitting. I think this, where it's at, is as soon as it's done with this circle going around the design, it'll do the word in the middle and then it'll be done, if I'm not mistaken. So it won't be too much longer. And I can, yeah, it'll be almost done as soon as this last little round goes around. So that's good. Um, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I can do a late start in the morning. So I don't have to worry about it. But I am going to grab a drink. So hang on. Let me go grab a drink. When you get a minute, scroll up. I left you information on two items, but it's grayed out on my end, so I hope you can see it. Gosh, y'all, that's the sound of progress. Love it. So now it's getting ready to do the letters. Yes. Um, I don't see it on your on, over here, dear. You can drop me an email if you would like, uh, Andrea. You can shoot me an email if you would like. That's um, at thebabiesbooty at gmail.com. Just like it is at the bottom of the screen. Just add uh, at gmail. Two hundred and twenty-five people watching. Loud. I didn't know it was that many. Hang on, let me go get a drink before I, my throat catches on fire. Going on. Oh no. Y'all have said the bobbin thread is running out. <laughs> oh my lord. One more thing to make this thing take longer. Hold on. I knew I should have checked um that bobbin. Let me think. Where are my bobbins? Let me go grab the bobbin.
right. So, what I didn't want to do is what I ended up having to do. So, I ended up doing it anyway. They do make pre-wound bobbins for um, this machine. And these bobbins also fit the 5x7 as well. So, they do make pre-wound bobbins. And the cool thing is, which could be what happened with that one, uh, you can refill these bobbins if you want to. So if you need to, oh, oops, sorry. If you need to um, put a color, I just use the empty ones and put color on it and put it in that bobbin case. So you can buy pre-wound bobbins. And I'm pretty sure I have these linked in my Amazon store because that's where I got them from. Um, but I'll double check just to be sure. So I don't ever wind white. I don't have any black ones, but I don't ever wind the white bobbins. So, and I didn't want to have to go all the way in the other room and get them. And, uh, ended up having to do it anyways. So, let's go ahead and take this off again. But this time, let me see if I can't just slide it. Nope, it can't slide it. Look at that. Uh, little itty bitty bit of bottom for you. Oh, Alright, so let's put this in. We're going to go around this way. Come around this way. Come up this way and down. And there we go. Did I get this in there? Hold on. Yep. Yeah. Come on. I don't want to I have to fight somebody this thing. Mess up now here at the end. Oh, that's what's happening. Okay. Alright, now. Oh, see? Gotta pay attention. Call. Trying to tell my stuff. I'll be mad, y'all. Okay. Now. Alright, y'all. Come on. Let's get this final stretch. Final stretch. This did not cut like it was supposed to. So I'm gonna cut it for it. Put my foot down and hang up. Yay! Alright. A non broken bobbin. Ooh! All right, good night, you guys that are going to bed. I know Sheila Cushionberry is like, my machine was like, mm, she said she's going to stay up, but e, where did you say you found the embossed designs on EMB Embroidery Library.com? EMB. I, I, let me see if I can't put that link again. Hold on, because I think it was the last thing I did. Yep, there they are. That's the link for it. This little night, my embroidery adventure some days. <laughs> right. It's after hours. I'm going to be a little bit informal, y'all. So you may hear me eat my cashews so I can put something on my throat. Get my throat from being hard. But it shouldn't be too much longer because that was a letter H. Capital. And then we'll need ERS lowercase. <laughs> so we shouldn't be too much longer. Good night, Laverne. Thank you. I'll still post a finished picture in the who group. I'll still post a picture. So for those of you that are left, is anyone? Oh, 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 ooh. Perfect. So if you're interested... I, for right now, will be offering some classes. 
let me put this up because it's rude to chew and talk. So we're going to offer some classes. Um, initially, what we will do is do um, So What Pro. <clears throat> and with So What Pro, it will take you, like we'll have, I'll list what the class is going to be about. Like, for instance, editing designs by... I don't know, removing a part of a design or something like that. We're, we're trying to get the schedule together. Well, I'm getting the schedule together. And it will be a paid class. It will be a small class. So we're looking at no more than maybe six participants in the class. At the exact very most, I'm looking at maybe 10, but I really don't want it to be that big. And the reason behind that is because I want it to be where if someone has to ask questions, they can ask questions and not feel intimidated because there are too many people in the class and other people have questions and it, it just takes a while and all the other jazz. So these will be very small classes. I would possibly do even smaller, but for right now, we're looking at roughly about six participants in the class. Um, to access the Who group, do you need to go to Eve's website, or is this like a Facebook group? Shelly Rodriguez, we have both. We have a Facebook group, and we have the group at thebabiesbooty.com. Um, so whichever method you feel most comfortable with is the route you can go. Um, there is more activity on Facebook than on the Hoop group, but there is activity both places. And then of course here on YouTube, there's memberships here on YouTube um, as well that come with perks uh, if you would like to do that. But the classes, we will let you know um, if you're interested in embroidery instruction, basic embroidery instruction, kind of how we did with towels tonight, um, then we'll look at doing, if there's enough uh, interest, we'll do classes on other things as well. Look at that! Oh, the sound of success, y'all. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It just finished. All right. So let's take this off. Oh, that's actually pretty. Go us. All right. Look at us hooping thick towels and embroidering super thick towels on the 4x4 embroidery machine. So there we go. I'm going to take it over to the other camera. And what I'm just going to do is pull it just like that. I'm going to leave this over here. I'll take that and show you what the back looks like. Because I see a mess. Alright. Um, let's see. Let me get the camera switched. Give me one. There we go. Here we are. Yas. Holler. Okay. So here's this big thick towel. And we have a super cute embossed embroidery design on it. And as you see, it's not really appropriate for this size towel, but just to show you that we could do it. And the embossed part is, as you see, where the nap was tacked down so that we didn't even need to use water-soluble stabilizer on top. Look at how beautiful that is. It really looks good. Even the thin uh, flower stems and stuff like that, it looks good. And this is going to look good for a very long time. All right, now let's go to the back side. And we lost some tension or something somewhere along the, along the way up here. Coming along that stretch, don't know why. But we did. It's looping on the bottom, so I'm assuming there was some issues up top maybe. Not sure. 
right now and really too tired to think about it. But thank goodness this is a personal towel. All right. Now, this would be a reason why I would suggest this is a big, big, big suggestion. When you're working on a project and you're doing this for a customer, any project that you're doing for a customer, when you take it off of the machine, don't take it out of the hoop until you look at both sides of it. So you look at the front, you look at the back, everything looks good, then you take it out of the hoop. But take it off of the machine and inspect it first before you take it out of the hoop because one of the hardest things to do is to try and re-hoop your project after you've taken it out of the hoop, okay? So keep that in mind uh, because had I seen this before taking it out of the hoop, then I probably would have cut this uh, with seam rippers or with my Peggy Stitch eraser that I love so much. Um, there's something right here. I don't know what that is. Something kind of hard. I don't know what that is. That could have been the problem, caused the problem for a little bit, and then it went away. But at any rate, I would have cut this, cleaned it up, and restitched this. Backed up the machine and just stitched this one section again so that the rest of it would be clean and look clean. But that's pretty much how you emboss a towel, how you float a towel, and how you can embroider a towel even on a little bitty 4x4 embroidery machine okay it can be done it's better to use the thinner stuff on those smaller machines but as you see thicker stuff can be done too just find a design that's more friendly to you know the thickness of your towel and you know try and do something that's not so stitch heavy for that smaller machine so at any rate that was fun. I've enjoyed my time with y'all. You guys were totally awesome. Um, I do appreciate. Do you ever use Embrilliance? I personally do not, Carol. But I can refer you to someone who does. I can refer you to someone who does. My embroidery mishaps like this are reach from some jolly juice and chocolates to keep me stitching. <laughs> Usually I use music. I use music. Will it be like a Zoom class? And do you have a ballpark? Um, it will be similar to a Zoom class, but we're looking to get on a class platform. So not Zoom, but I do have a class platform that I'm looking at. Um, and once I know for sure which one is going to be on, it'll, which I'm doing all of that between tonight and tomorrow when I finally do wake up. Well, not tonight, but tomorrow when I finally wake up and then we'll get that going. PG, the digitizing, um, I actually don't teach the digitizing. I really just don't feel like I'm good enough to teach digitizing because I personally have a lot more I want to learn. I can do some basics, which I do have a couple of basic videos out there, but not too much more than that. Um, so what I'll do is idea of the cost of classes and details. We're... Mm, not 100% sure. We're, we're Right now, I'm looking at doing a startup price, like the very trial class just to see how it feels, just to see how it works, um, see how well we do with it, a, a run, like a one-month run design, see if there's any more interest that makes it worth the the pan for the web, the class website. Um, I personally am looking at $29.95, but I need to confirm what the cost is of the website first, just to be 100% sure. But that's starting out. We may do more than that. It just, it a lot depends. And me and the CFO is still, isn't that the place where the bottom broke? No, huh? It's not. Um, me and the CFO are still discussing some of the scheduling. That's what I'm talking about. Teachable? No, I don't think it was teachable, Eddie Jr. It was something, it was a more interesting name than that. But it was along those lines, but it was more interesting than that. So, can you use Tender Touch on the back of the towel so that the thread won't slip? Yes, you can. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. You're welcome, Miss 143. Thank you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, Avery Head. I really appreciate that. Yeah, it was fun, though. It was fun. 
Um, oh, is that the place? Miss Deborah Harris Neal? No, the needle broke over here on the flowers. Somewhere over here on the flowers, but it this is oh, and the needle didn't break. It just got snagged. Thank goodness the needle didn't break. And this is up here, not on the flowers. The flowers is over on this side. This was up at the top. So I don't know what the deal was with that. One night class, yes. Well, yes and no. So what the way I'm wanting to do it is more like a a la carte. You take the classes that apply to you. So you may already know how to do putting letters together in So What Pro, but you may not know how to edit a design and rearrange the different ordering steps. Stuff like that. That's what the way they're going to be split up is by certain topics so that you can figure out which class you would prefer to take instead of me saying, okay, well, this is a straight So What Pro class and you got to sit through all this other instruction that you already know and then... You know, you may not feel like that's worth your time or energy. Um, so that's the way we're looking to do it. I don't I don't want to waste anyone's time. I want to make sure that it's completely what you need versus just a generic all in one type class. Ronnie's wraps tender touch is like a um, it's almost similar to stabilizer, but it's heat adhesive and you heat you know, iron it to the back of the embroidery so that you don't feel, or in some instances, you don't see the threads, but usually it's kind of see-through a little bit. So you don't feel the back of the embroidery and it'll keep the, the threads from moving or going anywhere, which generally you shouldn't have that issue, but they use it mainly for babies, you know, so that the back of the embroidery doesn't rub against the babies. Think if it, I think there's something similar to that. Yes, that is correct. That is correct. Eddie Jr. That that sounds more like it, actually. So, you're welcome, Tricia. Welcome. I don't think I've ever seen your name. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you for speaking up and saying something. How many classes are you going to offer? Just in case the classes will probably. Ho I hope they fill up, um, because we're only going to do a certain amount starting out. Because I I just don't want to schedule. If well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll start small. So maybe right now we'll start small, a class or two a week. Um, schedule it. If it fills up, then I'll add more. If it doesn't fill up, then I'll know I did the right amount of classes. That's pretty much the route we want to go. So, but we'll discuss it a little bit more in the Facebook group because I intend to post the first schedule. Um, tomorrow in the tomorrow evening in the Facebook group and do a live about it tomorrow. So if you guys are available tomorrow evening, check us out in Facebook. It will be on Facebook, not on YouTube, the live. And we'll talk about the classes. Or oh, I may go live on both, being that we got double cameras around here now, y'all holler. Um, so we may do um, <laughs> both of them and see how the classes fill up at that point so any etsy tips Ooh, the baby shower place i am not really a fan but i mean the thing with etsy is you kind of gotta have something in a way you kind of gotta have something nobody else has and and that's kind of hard to do these days on etsy um so how do you join the Facebook group? Um, and Kelly Sherrard, I would say both of you guys go on uh, under groups and type in hoop group. And you should see the picture of me and Sir McQuackens. And that's the Facebook uh, hoop group. Um, or you can type in, I think, I'm pretty sure it's the hoop group. Or you can type in the baby's booty. Um, you may pull up my business page, but the hoop group should pull up too. But definitely it's under the hoop group. Um, but yeah, so we'll go live tomorrow evening and let you guys know about the class, where it is, how to take it, how much it's going to be, all those juicy details. Now, this is introductory pricing only because I need to make sure it's going to work, uh, because if it's, um, not financially sound based on the cost of the website that's going to host the classes, then there's just no point in doing them. Well, I have to figure out something else. 
I need the whole Soul What Pro class. Got it a long time ago, but haven't missed. Oh, I love Soul What Pro. Uh, Soul What Pro is everything. I, I cannot not have Soul What Pro. I just can't. It's, I'm too too much of a change stuff around type person, so I have to have it. Kim Wheeler, welcome. Thank you for joining us for the first time, and thank you for speaking up. How long do you anticipate the class time? These are not going to be super long classes either because they can get kind of boring, not boring, but they can get usually instructional. We, we want to keep it hot and on topic, you know, type situation. So maybe an hour, maybe. But I'll let you know for sure. I'll let you know for sure. Because I want them to be bite-sized and and easily digestible and not overwhelming. So that's also the reason why we're not, I'm still not 100% sure on the price. So a pro or hatch, which is better. Kelly, uh, with that, I would say both. There's no such thing as better. The reason why I say is because you can't digitize with So What Pro. You can only digitize with So Art. So Art is the digitizing program. So What Pro is the editing program. Now, Hatch, I've heard you can edit in Hatch. I have not been successful with that. Um, but I do digitize with Hatch. So um, if you're looking to digitize, depending upon just how involved you want to be in your digitizing, um, if you don't want to really get so deep into digitizing and learn all the ins and outs and all the stitches and all the stitch types and blah and pay a thousand dollars for the software, then so art is $75 and it's an auto digitizer. You can make adjustments to tweak it and get it to look great, but it's automatically digitized uh, or it automatically digitizes. Wilcom Hatch it does have an auto digitizing feature, but Wilcom Hatch really shines in you literally building your own embroidery stitch by stitch. So um, Wilcom Hatch is for digitizing, whereas Sewer Pro is for editing. So like resizing or adding a name, like for instance in the towel, what I did today where it says hers. Um, with So What Pro, I could have took off hers and erased hers and just put my name instead of putting hers. So, you know, that's pretty much what you would do with So What Pro. Um, what time tomorrow? It'll be tomorrow evening. So probably after dinner. Um, so probably about six o'clock is when we'll be going. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's a lot of y'all on the West Coast, isn't it? So let's say about eight, eight p.m. tomorrow. We'll go live very briefly. It won't be a long, drawn-out thing at all. So, but thank you. I appreciate y'all hanging out with me a good bit later tonight. I appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you all around in the Hoop group. Thank you for joining us this evening. It was a lot of fun. We embroidered towels. I'm so very proud of the folks that was embroidering along with us and learning how to do towels. So definitely let us know and post pictures of your towels that you've done for the first time. We'd love to see them. Um, I'm digitizing well, trying to, and so art, so art and editing and so we're pro eight hours later, still haven't figured it out. Um, check, if you're talking about so art, look up Clever Dog Designs here on YouTube. Clever Dog Designs. She is who I refer people to uh, who want to learn how to digitize and sew art. She is phenomenal. She does beautiful digitizing and sew art. So definitely check her out. Thank you, PG. I appreciate it. So you guys have a great night. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us this evening. I thoroughly appreciated and enjoyed it we did have fun i was a little tired but i still had fun i always have fun with y'all because y'all are awesome souls so looking forward to um checking out your awesome projects that you're doing on towels be sure to post them in the who group either on facebook or on the babiesbooty.com looking forward to seeing all of that and definitely looking forward to having you guys join us again next sunday uh 9 p.m 8 p.m what time is it 9 p.m. Eastern Standard. <laughs> Time for bed. All right, y'all. Have a good night and look forward to seeing you all next week. Until we see you again, we hope you have happy and boring.
Bye. <laughs>